Good evening, Southside family. This is Pastor Dwayne, and I'm so glad to have Grayson Russell here with us. Grayson is has a big movie coming out this week, and it's Greyhound, a movie where he's with Tom Hanks. Um, Grayson, the, the way I first heard about Grayson was he is a Lee University graduate, and as you know, that's where I went. Uh, that's where several people in the church went. Um, and they said this Lee student's in Greyhound. And I thought, well, that's that's really a really big deal. But then when I started looking at Grayson, I realized it's a big deal that he came to Lee because you had been in so many things through the years, starting with Talladega Nights with Will Ferrell, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And how did that happen? That was all the good Lord. Um, I grew up in Clanton, Alabama, which is the middle of the state, which is essentially the middle of nowhere. Um, Clanton's got about 9,000 people in it on a good day. I love it. I mean, it's my home. Um, my mom's an accountant. My dad's worked in the construction field all his life. Grandparents were peach farmers. Uh, when I was seven, I wanted to be George Strait and ride bulls and draw pictures. That's what I wanted to do. That was my aspirations <laughs> as a seven-year-old. Uh, at six, I had done some commercials for, for a guy who owned a local car dealership, but he would, you know, he would use the varsity cheer squad. That wasn't a huge, a huge enterprise. Um, there was a newspaper article um, that someone had given to my mom about Talladega Nights, uh, which was at that point an untitled you know, Will Ferrell, Adam McKay project. Um, and dad went fishing and we were bored. And so mom took me literally because we had nothing else to do. Dad went fishing, me and mom were bored. We went to this open call in Birmingham. I had never really auditioned before um, in my life. <laughs> I was seven years old. <laughs> and uh, a couple weeks later, they, uh, they called us back and said, hey, we're going to have callbacks in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, and, you know, we'd love for you to come out. And I don't even know if we really even thought that this was an actual film. Uh, we were entirely illiterate to uh, the, the process. Uh, we still are to, uh, to some extent. And um, we went, I auditioned, uh, we made a little vacation out of it. We went to Charlotte and came back through Six Flags in Atlanta. And uh, a couple of weeks later, they called and said, hey, um, you know, you got it, be in North Carolina and, you know, at such and such for two and a half months. And that's how it began. Um, and I had no intention at all of ever becoming, you know, an actor. Um, not that I didn't want to, but, but again, you, you know, look at, you know, the, my, my family and where I come from, that's not the first thing that you would, you know, think would be my major occupation. Right. And then the next thing, was the next thing Diary of a Wimpy Kid, or what, when did that come about? We did, um, we, I, I did one film in between. Uh, it, it, at that point, it was kind of a two-year-old. A lot of people don't realize I got saved while we were filming Talladega Nights. Um, and that's part of, you know, kind of my testimony with the, with the dubs, I guess, where we would have first at least somewhat uh, been in contact. Mm -hmm. um and so that was a, a whole a whole other deal um but i uh, i did a film called the rainbow tribe shortly after talking nights it was about two years um with uh, david james elliott from jag um at, at that time was was really big um and noah monk went on to be gibby and i carly max burkholder went on to play max in parenthood um we, we did that film in uh in la here here in california and then wimpy kid so it was, it was Tally Nights, two years, Rainbow Tribe, two years, and then all three Wimpy Kids back to back. Well, the Wimpy Kids, my girls love those movies. <laughs> and uh, uh, so then I pointed out who you were and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah. So what was that experience like doing all of those back to back? I, I never get projects by the normal means of getting a, a, a particular film with Wimpy Kid. I had auditioned for it. Um, January, February of 2008, I was in the fifth grade, I think, um, and didn't get it. Knew that I had gotten pretty close to, you know, the, the, the final rounds, final screen test, but I, I didn't make it. It didn't make the cut. Um, it was supposed to film that summer, and then summer rolled around. We had assumed they had already cast the film and were already working, and I ended up being in L.A. working on a, a Disney show called I'm in the Band. I did their pilot episode. It ran for a couple seasons, and uh, they – talked to my manager and said, hey, would he like to come in for Fregley again? And we had just assumed they had already filmed the project um, because this is on kind of into the summertime. And uh, I went in, I was able to be in the room and audition and got it. And that led to uh, what would be two and a half months out of the year, every August to October, 
uh, for three years in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, up in Canada. Um, so my, the better part of my middle school career, uh, public school, I graduated with the kids I went to preschool with when I was two. Um, oh, wow. The better part of my middle school career was spent in, um, in Vancouver filming the Wimpy Kid. When you were growing up, uh, your kids back in, uh, your friends back in Alabama, uh, how did they treat you? How did you assimilate? That was, that was the beauty of it was these were the kids that I had gone to preschool with since I was two. I, mean, I went to public school my, my entire grade school career. Um, and those were the kids that I graduated with. Uh, it was, they, thankfully, they didn't treat me different. They didn't, they didn't, I mean, I was Grayson. And, you know, they'd get a heads up, hey, I'm going to be gone for a couple months. And, you know, be, hey, well, you know, come over and spend the night whenever you get back. And uh, we had a good time. And, I mean, of course, we'll keep in touch because I'm getting phone calls that call in Alabama from Canada and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And we had yeah. a little, um, it was like a little magic jack is what we had that we could like call and bypass like long distance and you know all kinds of fun little things oh yeah i remember those yeah yeah you know we would skype and of course that was before facetime was really big and you know we had we had a good time and we made it work but i that's the thing i mean they never treated me any different and that's been a that's been a blessing they really grounded me and, and, and kept me kept me on board down to earth well another thing that's grounded you i mean uh, being a christian the whole time we uh, a lot of us grew up kind of like uh there's just there's no faith you know in the entertainment industry but we know that that's not true uh, especially me you know i've i've talked to people for years and years and uh, it's amazing uh how many people who are you know who have a devout faith who are making mainstream movies and and all that so how's that been uh you know received uh it's it's not as uh, uncommon i think as one time we we thought it was. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, yeah, it's not near as thankfully as uncommon as is what uh, you would normally, you know, give it credit for. I think the scariest piece was even going into Talladega Nights was like you. Oh, you only hear the horror stories, and that's of anything. That's of any genre, any industry, any particular event. You're going to hear the bad and hear very little of the good. Um, and uh, frankly, if Talladega Nights had been a horrible experience, I never would have would have done it again. Um, but it was the exact opposite. It was a extremely loving and, and nurturing, you know, environment. Uh, for me, I was scared to death because I was going to have to, you know, use a whole lot of language that as a seven year old, I wasn't comfortable with. Um, and the good Lord works in all kinds of crazy ways. I ended up getting, like I said, getting saved while we were filming. And then, um, because we were attending a church in Charlotte. And I went into Adam, who's the director, who's directed, obviously, Talladega Nights, Anchorman, uh, the campaign, the other guys, uh, anything that, that pretty much Will has done, Adam has, has had, Adam McKay has had a, had a part in it to some extent. Um, and I went up to him and said, hey, do I really have to say all these words? Do I have to use this language? And I didn't realize that I could have been fired for that. They had every right. reason to to you know send me back home because from you know business standpoint here's an actor who's not willing to do his role and that wasn't necessarily the case it was just the, the piece of it that i wasn't comfortable with and uh adam sat up and looked me in the eyes and said grayson you have to never have to say anything that you're not comfortable with and they held up to that anytime there was anything even questionable that came down the line it was whoa hold the show He's, he's, he doesn't, you know, and, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't degrading to any, it wasn't, oh, we can't do this because he's not going to, it was no, we're not gonna, you know, we're still going to treat him as a, as a child because I was a child. Um, right. And it is, it's funny. A lot of people don't, you know, assume that a, a mission field is, is overseas or in an area of town that, you know, they might not want to be in. Um, but the mission field is anywhere you want to, I mean, anywhere you can feasibly work. Um, you don't have to be in, you know, on the board at a church. You don't have to be behind a pulpit to minister to people. That's the whole, the whole point of this great commission is, Hey, look, you got to go out there and you got to spread it. Um, and when it comes down to it, the film ministry is no different. Now I think how you approach that ministry is, is, you know, that's the, that's the, the kind of rub there is. I mean, for me, when we did Greyhound, I mean, everybody knew four or five things. They knew that, you know, I, I worked at a church or I don't even know if they knew, they knew that I had done church music. Uh, they knew that I went to Lee. They knew that I was a spider monkey kid and you don't have to, to be a Christian to do any of those. 
Um, but yet and still, in witnessing to people, you know, it, and as a last resort, use words. I mean, because people watch how you live. And you know what? It was, it was a wonderful thing because, you know, I didn't beat them over the head with, you know, King James walking around. Um, but yet and still, the wonderful thing was is, is I think they knew what I stood for. The right. horrible thing was they knew what I stood for. Um, so they hold you to, to a higher standard. I mean, pe people watch you. And that's, again, that's no different than it's no different in the film industry than in any others. You know what, if you claim to believe this and you claim to, uh, you know, be guided by this particular principle or set of, you know, standards, then they're going to hold you to that. Uh, no different than I would hold anyone to, to what they would believe. And it's very important that, you know what, okay, if, if we're going to say this, then we got to walk it out too. Right. Um, but in, in a way that's loving, because I mean, dear Lord, we're not here to, you know, always, you know, beat people over the head with things and, and fire and brimstone. We gotta love people. Um, and, and, and that's the thing, regardless of, you know, where they may be, you gotta meet them where they're at because the good right. Lord me where I was. Um, and I, I have no doubt that he met you, uh, where you were whenever that was, and you know, that's constantly for me. Um, and we've got to be willing to, you know, to do that to other people. And, and I say that like this film industry is such a horrible, dark place. It is not. Uh, you will right. gravitate towards people that you won't even mean to and realize that, oh, man, well, well they, they believe the same things I do. Um, right, yeah. And not that, not that other people's beliefs are, are inherently negative, you know, and just not, not to paint others in a bad light, but I know, you know, what I believe. I know the faith that I hold right. to I believe that's the one that's gonna, that's gonna pull through and get me there. Uh, or right. otherwise I'm going to croak and I'm going to be dead wrong, but you know, I don't think so. Um, that's not what I believe. Um, but you find people that, you know, you grow to be lifelong friends with in this industry because right. when it comes down to it, no different than Talladega Nights or no different than Greyhound or Wimpy Kid. Wimpy Kid particularly because we had three films. Um, but when you're put in with a, you know, a group of people uh, for two and a half months and you're with each other with Wimpy Kid, we were working probably 10, 11 hours a day. Um, with Greyhound, we were working, you know, probably 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever, whatever we had to work, we worked it. Um, when you're together, that long and that's all you do and with greyhound you go through boot camp with the navy and marines and you know you're here and you're running and you're jumping and you're shouting and you're getting shot at by rubber rubber things and you know you're you have a wonderful time um but you get super close to these individuals because right. uh you know a lot of people will throw you know the film industry under the bus for the things that it is not uh but the thing that it most certainly is is pressurized and it is a very, um, sometimes very difficult environment to work under solely because of the sheer time constraints. That, okay, we've worked for, you know, you might have a film that, you know, you work two months to get to film this particular scene and then you get there and you go, okay, we've got an hour to knock this out maybe if you're lucky. And that might be three or four different resets and whatever. So it's, uh, you, it, there's a lot of pressure to get done the things that you have to. And that's the thing is when you're working, under such a high stress environment with all these people for such long hours, which are good hours, they're wonderful hours, you get really close. And it doesn't matter if you're in Vancouver for two, you know, three years or if you're in you know, Baton Rouge for one, mm -hmm. you get really close to these people and you understand that you know what, I'm here to shine a light. Right. Whether you're surrounded by lights or whether you're not. You know, um, Tolkien puts it, you know, um, a light in dark places when all the lights go out. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what you're there to be. And you know what? Each set may look different and it probably will be because people are different. People are people and they will never cease to be good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and I love working with them. And you know what? Yeah. If that's hanging from an industrial scaffold at 120 feet in the air, which I've done, or laying hardwood flooring, or, hey, we're on the red carpet at the Ming Theater having a you know good old time with Joey Roberts. 
that's, you know, that's yeah. where I'll be. And I'll love every minute of it as long as I can be there. Yeah. Sorry, that yeah, was long. Preach. No, 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 that's good. Yeah, we got a, we got a sermon. Yeah. That's great. Well, you know, our slogan for this year at our church is actually living the life. And uh, the pastor has just been preaching, uh, you know, all these messages about us being the light. We can't, you know, darkness doesn't change. You know, darkness is being darkness. The only thing, if it's dark outside, it's because we're not, we're not being the light enough. So that's what we're encouraging all of us to do is to stand up and, and, and make an impact on our community, on our world. And, and, and that's one of the reasons we're doing this. Uh, you know, this program that we do is just to continue to spread information, you know, yeah. uh, positive information. And, and that's the thing is when I was a kid, one of the last times I ever really got spanked, like really good. My, my, one of my last real good ones, I think I was four or five. And it was because my dad had went to go buy a boat. And I sat outside in the parking lot, it was a gravel parking lot, and threw rocks at the boats that were sitting in the dealership parking lot. And this dealership sat on the corner of this interstate. And so you could see it every time I drove by. And of course, dad came out there and just, oh yeah, he got all over me because it, here's this little kid throwing rock, no different than at a car dealership. You know, walk out there and throw rocks at cars. No, you don't do that. I was four, I learned the hard right. way. Um, and for the rest of, you know, probably three or four years, every time we would pass that boat dealership, you would hear me in the back seat go, oh, don't throw rocks. Mm -hmm. Don't throw rocks. And I think the world as it is, is awfully quick to throw rocks. And even, even Christians, we're, we're very quick and I've experienced it to, to an extent to throw rocks at, you know, other Christians and you don't necessarily know the situation, no different than it's very easy to, you know, say, oh, well, he's off, you know, doing Talladega nights, which is, you know, might be this, you know, in 2005, this crazy, uh, you know, heinous film. Um, but yet and still that's where I got saved. You know, and that's where I was able to shine a light. And, and I think we're awfully quick to look at a particular situation and, and think, oh, well, that's, they're not, you know, they're doing wrong or they're not, you know, living right, right. When, when we're, when we're there to be a light, regardless of wherever we are. And I think there's, right. there's a very fine line, I, I think at times um, of, being in the world and not of it. There's always, there's always a line and, and that I think the line might be different uh, for everybody. Um, but I, I, I think it's taken me even a long time to realize that, you know what, the mission field is anywhere, is everywhere. You know, right. if, it, if it's on a film set, then, then, you know, if that's where you work and there's, there's people that you will reach that I will never meet. And there's people that I will, I will meet that, that you'll never, that you'll never see. And I think it's important that we figure out, okay, we got to be used in the field that we're at, um, right. wherever that is. And I think sometimes even I've been, been pretty quick to say, oh man, that doesn't line up. And you go, you know what? I'm not there. You know I mean? Right. You, you judge the tree by, by the fruit it bears. And I'm not trying to, 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 to give a, to give an out here. Um, but I think sometimes we're, we're pretty quick, even as Christians go to other Christians go, ah, I don't, I don't know about that. Um, so it is, it's funny just to see how other people react to, to some of the things you do, um, whether that's in a pulpit or whether that's not, um, right. is, is interesting because I mean, that's the thing. Everyone's different. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, but I believe that the good Lord has put me here for a purpose, no different than he's put you. Uh, right. And if mine's in the film industry, then that's where I'm, I'm, I'm going to be to the best of my ability. Um, right. And if it's not, then I won't be. Um, but I hope it is because I really like doing film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really enjoy it. Let's talk about Greyhound. Greyhound is so good. Yeah. Uh, let's just talk about... Uh, it's probably been a year or two since you made it. Is that right? Yeah, at Greyhound we filmed in 2018. Um, Greyhound was a dream. Um, for me, it's probably the, one of my favorite films to be a part of. It was a tough film. It was a hard film to do. Um, we were, um, it was, you know, we were long hours and we were working hard. Um, 
I auditioned for it mid January of 2018. Um, and I had just lost a dear friend. Um, he called me his youngin, um, who passed away at 99, who was a World War II vet. He shot howitzers in New Guinea. And, um, he died January 2nd, 2018. He was hundred years old, more or less. And, um, I started filming uh, Greyhound uh, somewhere around February 20th. Uh, so it was, I mean, just over a month and I'm going, okay, well, here I am. This is my tribute to right. Private Frank Staggs, you know, who, um, I mean, he was my buddy and it, it was awful to lose him. Um, but we started, I got the call on uh, the Friday of like Valentine's Day weekend, 2018. They said, hey, you got it. We need you in Baton Rouge. Uh, they called me on a Friday. They said we needed me in Baton Rouge on Tuesday to begin boot camp with the Navy and Marines. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. oh, dear God. And I had uh, me and my dad were actually going to go off on a trip for spring break, which would have which would have been right around that time. So I was coming home just to see my folks. And then I was going to go back to school and then come back for spring break. Um, I had washed clothes that week. So when I got home to see everybody, I only had like, three pairs of clothes, four pairs of clothes. <laughs> and then I got a call, hey, well, you gotta go to Baton Rouge. So I start boot camp with the Navy and Marines with like the clothes on my back. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Um, and we were being trained by um, the, the man responsible for, for spearheading the concept of military advisors to film. Uh, this, this man named Captain Dale Dye. Uh, you would know him as, um, the first film he advised was Platoon, and they won four Academy Awards. Uh, he's also a fantastic actor in, in his own right. A lot of the films that he trains the actors on, he also acts in. Um, Platoon, Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, The Pacific, uh, Thin Red Line, Alexander the Great, Born on the Fourth of July. All these films I've grown up watching, idolizing. No different than, than you know, Forrest Gump and Castaway. Um, right. So here we are working under this 74 year old three time purple heart recipient, mind you, um, who's putting us through boot camp. Um, normally I think most of those camps run about two to three weeks. This one only ran two and a half days. Given the time constraints, we hopped straight into that, into rehearsals, um, as well as with, uh, you know, chief, um, chief Frederick, chief Unz, uh, chief Caratini. We had a lot of, um, ex-military, current military, or active duty military, retired military, uh, they're training us, which was fantastic, as well as a lot of the actual crew um, were made up of, you know, retired military, um, which was super cool, um, because you had this, this other level of, well, not only are we, you know, creatives here that are, you know, making this this piece this work of art but also we're doing it alongside people who have lived this particular lifestyle um and that was a blessing uh, we worked for the better part of two two and a half months um in the studio at celtic studios in baton rouge on a gimbaled set which is essentially um a, a, a big hydraulic motor with a set on top of it that was the the bridge portion of the ship a recreation of the pilot house you know steering wheel the helm um the whole kit and caboodle um and so the ship would actually move under you as you were doing this in correlation with the with the um visual environment that you were dropped inside of the the, the computer more or less um so we were either there on this ship that's moving under you you're, and you're working and you're screaming and you're jumping and the majority of, of my scenes which which you've you've actually seen that I, I haven't i've seen some test footage um you know is it's a dream. I'm screaming at Tom Hanks and Tom Hanks is screaming at me and yeah. we're shot at by things and we're running and we're jumping and we're shouting. And, um, you know, thankfully, um, Tom Hanks uh, lives up to his, his reputation. He is the most least intimidating person I have ever had the pleasure of working with. And, uh, I've been blessed to, to work with a lot of people. Um, I mean, Will Ferrell, Adam McKay, um, Danny Glover, Josh Lucas, uh, Jane Lynch, and and you you stand there, you go, oh man, this is Forrest Gump, and a, a lot of the times you you'd have to pinch yourself because you go, I just got done yelling, <laughs> Forrest Gump, and yeah, yeah. Uh, that was awesome, and he never um, 
never once assumed that that was your first project, that that was your first time ever, ever working in, in that kind of environment. Um, the first conversation we had, we were, we were talking and um, we were talking about the stuff and he said, well, what was the first thing you did? And I said, well, uh, I, I got to, uh, I worked with uh, Michael Clark Duncan, which is from the new Tom had worked with on the Green Mile, uh, doing Tile Day Nights. And he said, oh, man, I was watching that last week. And that was easily the most humbling experience that I've ever had in my life is going, wow, Tom Hanks yeah. liked my stuff in Talladega Nights. Now, granted, I was seven years old, but that's no different than, you know, Bill Belichick or, or Nick Saban saying, hey, I, I watched your highlight reel last <laughs> week. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Here you go. That's, yeah. that's awesome. You know, one thing about his character in Greyhound that I really appreciated, and we're, we're talking about being a light and talking about, uh, you know, uh, matters of faith, is that his character in the movie is a man of faith. And since, since you haven't seen it, I don't know if you've seen all that, but uh, the movie opens with him praying. The movie ends with him basically giving a prayer of Thanksgiving. Uh, and he prays over his meals. Uh, I think in the, you know, it's something from the novel, you know, and he wrote the screenplay of it. But I appreciated the fact that that was intact. Uh, I, I'm old enough to remember a time when matters of faith were kind of taken away from stories, even though they, they had been in the foundation of the story that somebody said, oh, well, we're not going to get into that. But that was, that's intact in Greyhound. And I, and I appreciated that. I think it adds some realism to that character. And that's, that's the thing is you, you look at their task is the, the easiest way for me to, to describe Greyhound to people is when they ask is I'm like, man, it's Jaws, but with submarines. Um, and, and as we're going through, you know, boot camp, we're understanding that the only way for these ships in, in, in real life in 1942, um, in the North Atlantic, the only way for them to really kill these, these U-boats to, to defend themselves from these, you know, German, these Nazi subs is to one, if you could, if you could get under air cover, you could, you could, right. we're, yeah. we're, we're pretty well safe. Um, but the, the all of Greyhound is, is okay. Well, we're over the North Atlantic. We don't have right any air cover. Uh, you would literally have to figure out where this this U boat is, drive over the top of it, drop the depth charges, and pray that you guess that he's at the right depth. Because I believe the ones we were using um, at that point in time uh, would go off at twenty five fifty, and I think maybe seventy five feet. Or, or yards, whatever, I can't remember. Um, it was a guessing game. And all these subs had to do is pop their periscope up and say, okay, they're at point A, drop back down and wait five minutes and pop up and go, okay, they've gone from A to B in five minutes. That means in five more, they'll be from B to C. And so naturally they just point their torpedo in that direction and you time it right. And we would just ride right on into them. It was terrifying. You look at it and go, there's no way other than the sheer grace of God that any of these men survived because you had to, it was a guessing game. The whole time is trying to outsmart right. um, the, the, the German subs, the Wolfpack who were, I mean, fantastic at what they did in their own right. They were extremely proficient. Um, and I mean, it's a game of chess. Right. Now I'm saying this. You've seen it. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. You can uh, you know, tell you like you haven't seen the film. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, that's really a weird experience that I've seen it and you haven't. But uh, yeah, uh, um, you uh, went to Lee University and you graduated uh, with uh, what was your degree in? Film with a film degree. Uh, digital film. Media. Okay. Cinema. Cinema degree. Is yeah, they didn't offer that when I was there. I just got a plain old-fashioned communications degree. So now, you know. when did you graduate? If you don't mind me asking. Ninety-three. You're gonna say, "Wow, I didn't realize it was that old." But yeah, ninety-three. It's first year that the uh, the Dixon Center was open. Uh, the community that was our big communications building at the time, where the the theater. I was in uh, the first play in the Dixon Center when they opened it. Wow. So. That was fun. I, I, I had a little bit of acting uh, thing there, uh, but 
I, 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 I sang more than I did anything else. I was in one of the choirs there, but Lee was great. So, and you said you're going to, you're going to go, uh, get a counseling degree. I believe after so. this. I'll probably end up doing that through, uh, PTS through the, uh, seminary, uh, through, right. Through, but I mean, you can, you can hit Lee with a rock uh, from it. I mean, it's right behind their, their soccer field. Um, but that's, that's the plan. So that's my, you know, that's my, that's my backup and, plan because uh, Lord it, knows I'm going to keep acting. But that's and you love Cleveland then? I love Cleveland. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a great town. You can smell the chocolate in the afternoon. Sure can. Yeah, so, yeah, it's cool. And you probably speak some. I, you know, I can tell from yes, uh, some yes, of what you shared. I do um, uh, a lot of youth music there as, as far as church music um, as well as I, I've always grown up more or less speaking at schools. Uh, that just kind of came with the the uh, the job right. as far as with the acting stuff. So I still do that pretty heavily. Um, now, obviously, with the COVID kind of Corona thing going down, uh, that'll be interesting to see how that carries over. Um, but I mean, we're all figuring that out as we go. Are you living in California, or are you just working there I'm, now? I'm just here for a time. I'm just here for a couple of weeks. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't know your family's still in Alabama. Yes, sir. That's where they're at. Well, Greg, that's great. You're close enough in Cleveland to, to see them and all that. And you're still, you know, there's so much filming that goes on in Georgia. I mean, that's, yeah, it's so, the Hollywood of the South. Last I checked, it was the largest film market in the world, uh, which, yeah. is, which is crazy. You know, this, um, this, all the, the tax incentive stuff, no different than Greyhound. Um, when Louisiana readjusted their tax cap, Greyhound was, I believe, the first film to go on under that new uh, particular set of guidelines so we had the governor there you know we'd be filming it's like okay the governor's the governor's here but you know yeah. all, and for a go, so here, here comes the governor oh that's fun <laughs> any other fun memories you want to share before we get oh, off the coffee we, we had a blast doing greyhound um and that's the thing i'm trying not to you know give away too many things um one of my, my favorite memories, and I don't think this will be spoiling anything, was we were um, we were on the USS Kidd, which is, we, we filmed on the Gimel, and then we would film on the USS Kidd, which is a 1938 model Fletcher-class destroyer that was actually kamikaze uh, at Okinawa and uh, during World War II. And so we're there, and, and, and we're working, and to be on this ship where I, b I believe uh, 36 some odd sailors, you know, they lost their lives almost in an instant. Um, you're there, you're wearing 1941 model attire, regalia. I mean, I'm in my M1 helmet that was made in 1941 for World War II and is strapped on. I have my mic pack shoved up in the top of it. And you're surrounded by not only these guys that you've gone through boot camp with, you're also surrounded by a as well as a cast who are also ex-military who have helped train you as well as a crew that is a, a large portion of them are ex-military and then you're surrounded by 70 something extras all in their full deal right guns are going off mm -hmm. tom hanks is screaming at you you're <laughs> screaming back. you're screaming at everybody else and you know it's uh, this the silhouette that's kind of stuck in my mind is we were filming a, a little piece at night, which we didn't do a ton of, and um, they they shot the the five inch cannon. Actually, they really shot this thing, and Tom is standing in front of me, and it goes off, and I just in my mind there's this silhouette of well, there's Tom, and he's I mean I could reach out and poke him in the back, you know, and he's standing there, and this you know right. gun just went off, and I'm in my helmet, and there's you know raindrops coming down off the the bill of it and um it was a dream it was a, it was a hard shoot it was a very difficult um environment just because of the uh, the, the content that we were tasked with creating um and the you know parameters therein but we had a wonderful time and i mean I'll, i will always remember that as one of my favorite shoots to be a part of awesome it was a blast cool cool i wish i'd have been there Yes, sir. But um, well, you know what? I wish it was on the big screen. That's when I watched it. It is such a spectacle uh, that I hope that when theaters start opening back up, that 
uh, they'll at least do some type of limited theatrical run because it is an experience. We put it on a big screen at home, but it's not the same as dimming the lights, you know, and the Dolby sound and all that stuff because it's really intense. What was Julia Roberts like when you filmed with her? That was, that was the thing with, with Mother's Day. I, she worked, I think, it was funny. I had a much smaller part, and I ended up working a few more days than she did. She came in and maxed out. I think she had about four or four and a half days. Um, and oh, okay. Full, she had four full days. I was there about a week and a half on and off. Um, I mainly worked with uh, Jason Sudeikis uh, from SNL, Wood and Millers. Um, right. Uh, I, I ended up becoming really, really close um, with – a lady named Lucy Walsh who actually just got engaged. Um, she's one of my dear friends. Her dad is Joe Walsh from the Eagles. Uh, oh wow! Yes, which was which is that was really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, as well as Dave Fingus, who's um, a, a legitimate legendary first AD. He just finished doing um, the Lion King. Um, he works a lot with John Favreau. I believe they're about to. Uh, I, believe, I know he's about to work on the next Spider Man um, as the first assistant director there. Um, it's crazy, and that's the thing. The good Lord will put you in in places that you will not understand while you're there. Um, with Greyhound, we had a uh, one of the one of the chiefs who put us through boot camp. Um, production didn't put him up, uh, which was totally fine because he lived nearby. Um, but just with the with the hours that we worked, it was pretty difficult for him, for him to go home and then come back in because we we'd wrap late and go back and work pretty early. Um, and so he would just stay with me. And here we are, you know, this is little, you know, 120 pound Grayson's got a, you know, an eight year special forces bit hanging out, you know, that's sleeping on the futon in the hotel room. And come to find out, he had just gotten saved like a couple months, maybe a year before. He's got a, you know, a brand new baby boy and a brand new wife. And he's trying to figure out, okay, how do I navigate this life and this faith that I'm brand new to? And so if nothing else, I know that, that, my purpose for being on Greyhound was to have those theological discussions at two thirty in the morning. <laughs> you know, after we go hollering and screaming each other as we <laughs> get shot at and everything else. Yeah. You know, and then we you know we come in and I know that the, the good Lord will, will will put you where He wants you to be, um, and sometimes you won't want to be there, <laughs> um, but you know it's it's all for a purpose, um, and I enjoy it. Do your best, enjoy every minute of it. Awesome. Well, it's great to talk to you today. And I, I know that we probably passed each other at Cleveland Walmart or, <laughs> yeah, no, that's or, so funny. or Jenkins at some point or something, you know, all the different places. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's wild that now, you know, I'm in actually in Orlando, you're in California, but we were in Cleveland just a few months ago. So, yes, sir. but we're really proud of you. And, uh, Glad you came to Lee. I know Lee is uh, better for that, and and uh, it's a great school. And love that uh, Christmas in July movie. You know that you're that you helped out with, and Miles is a great and Jeff. Uh, Jeff was the one who invited me to come see it, and I just know realized, him. I am wearing this shirt in Christmas in July. Oh, yeah. really? So funny. I just realized that. Yeah, because my hair is slick based. The whole. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, no, as soon as I saw that you had done an article, I called Miles. So I had just gotten off the phone with Miles right before we were starting to, uh, to do this. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. A good, a good time. Yeah. yeah, it was a good movie. It's really sweet. Yes, sir. And this one's great. So good to talk to you. Anything else you want to add before we before I let you go? I, yeah, I think if there's anything else, I'll say it'll probably take me an hour and a half to figure it out. I don't want to <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you for what you do. I really, I really, really respect that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all. what you I, do. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad you like Greyhound. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, have fun yeah. interviewing uh, Mr. Aaron. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look forward to that. Yes, sir. Thanks so much, Grayson. Bye-bye.